Hi everyone and welcome to the CBI channel. In this brand new series, we're going to take a look on how we can implement a calendar in our Django and React application. And we're going to be doing that by using full calendar. Now in this series, we will cover many, many different ways to set up the calendar, modify and display your own data in the calendar. But in this first video, our focus will be on an introduction and a basic setup of full calendar inside of our Django and React application. At the end of this video, we will have this look inside of our application. We will have a basic calendar with some hard-coded events in them, and we can move along in this calendar through the different months. And later on, we will of course make this look much better, have different options in there, and also display data from our database on this calendar. Now to realize this initial view, we're going to be following six main steps. I'm going to start by showing you our base Django and React application that we're going to be using for this series. Then I'm going to give a brief introduction to Full Calendar and show you what it is all about. And we're going to be installing Full Calendar into our project. Then we're going to be creating a new page for our calendar and we're going to be creating a new component for our calendar as well. And as a last step, we're going to be investigating the base functionality and plot some events on our calendar so that we have the example all ready. So let's start with the first step, which is a basic rundown of our application. I've started my front end server and you can see that we have a very basic configuration with a navigation menu showing our home page and our about page. And we can go to the home page and the about page and there's no real other content present there. Now, if we go to our actual source code, you can see that we have set up the back end and the front end already. In our front end, we have some basic routes present in our application and we have some pages for home and about. But that is all that we currently have in here. And if we go to the installs that are in our front end, we did already install some stuff for Material UI, um, but I don't think that we will be really needing this specifically for the calendar. If you want to know how to do this setup, then I would like to refer you to my previous series on Django and React, where we did the setup of Python and Django in combination with React using Vite. So now let's dive a little deeper into how we're actually going to create this calendar inside of our application. To do this, we're going to be using some packages from Full Calendar. And Full Calendar is, as advertised in the documentation, the most popular JavaScript calendar. And it is specifically developed for JavaScript libraries such as React, View, Angular, and JavaScript. And if we take a look at their demo, you can see what it is all about. It is a grid on the screen with all the days and the months, and you can move to next month, and you can display all of your events from your database on this grid and do all different kinds of actions. You can use arrows to go to next month and then go back to today, and you can even switch the view from a month view to a week view to a day view and also to a list view. And this gives the users many possibilities for taking a look at the data on a calendar. Now, in addition to that, you can do all different kinds of things, such as on-click events um, and moving them around on the calendar, all of which we will be touching upon later in this series. For today, we're going to make sure that we have a basic configuration of this calendar inside of our application, and then we can use the next videos to make sure we have all of these different features on there as well. Now, to get started with this, we can actually click the Get Started button, as is in many documentations. And if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that it integrates with popular front-end frameworks, and one of them is React. So that's the link that we're going to be following. Now, on here, when we scroll down a little bit, you can see that we need to start with some installs. So let's do those right now. So I'm going to stop our front end server for now, and we're going to do npm install, and then I'm going to copy and paste the packages that we need. So we need at full calendar slash core. We also need at full calendar slash react. And we also need at full calendar slash daygrid. So let's give this some time to install. And our installs are now all complete. So let's go into our front end and create some pages where we're going to display the first calendar. So what I want to do in this series is I want to create a new navigation menu and a new page for every calendar that we create. Uh, because that gives you a little bit of an idea how the different configurations look uh, through the different videos. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is in the app.jsx file, I'm going to create a new path. And I'm going to name that path slash calendar one. And inside of the element, I'm also going to call that calendar one. Now, of course, calendar one currently does not exist. So we also need to create a new component for calendar one. So my homepage is going to be copied over and I'm going to say that this one is going to be calendar1.jsx. We're going to also set the title to calendar1 and then we're going to export default to calendar1. And then we can say this is the calendar1 page. So in here I will put everything from this first tutorial. Now, um, of course, we can just put all of the code for the calendar in this file. But for reusability, you might want to put it somewhere else and use some props to make it reusable. So just for that scenario, we're going to be creating a new folder inside of components called calendars, because I will create various calendars over the course of this tutorial series. And in here, I'm going to create a new file as well that states my calendar onejsx just so it has a little bit of a different name as calendar one. And I'm just going to copy over everything rough from there, put it in here and just say that this is going to be my calendar one and also export default my calendar one. So in here, we will be able to put all of the code that we will write later on for our actual calendar. And then we're going to display it on the calendar one page. So let's save what we have just done and tie it all together. So we have our calendar one right here, which is also in our app.jsx file. So it's all linked together, but we need to import calendar one from components and then calendar one. Now, the last thing that I'm also going to change is make a small change to my nav bar because we now have a home page and an about page on there. But I'm just uh, want to display the different calendars that I have. So I'm just going to delete the about page for now. I'm going to call this home page calendar number one. And the link is going to be calendar one. And I'm also going to change the two to calendar one. Uh, and let's also change the icon slightly. So if I go to material icons, we can just quickly grab a calendar. And let's just pick this one and copy it over by clicking on it. And then we can add that to our nav bar like this and just put a calendar icon as well on here. And now it should all work. So let's run our server with npm run dev and see what we see in our front end. And if we now go to the slash calendar one page, you can see that we have this canvas ready for our first tutorial. So let's make sure that we can actually display a calendar right there. So if we go back to the documentation, you can see that initializing a calendar is actually really easy. We can just put in a full calendar component, which is written down right here. And just like that, we will have a calendar inside of our application. So let's try that right here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over the imports that we have inside of this code block with the import full calendar and import day grid plugin. And if we now go to our code and we go to, to calendars and then my calendar one, we can also put those imports inside of our code right here. So it is the same as on there. Now you can see that all that we need to do is return the full calendar and then we can use all different kinds of props to make some changes. So what we're going to do now is just copy over this full calendar part right here from the return statement. And then inside of our code, we can just replace everything that is in our return statement and put in the calendar, including the plugins. And let's save that. And this should actually be everything that we need to do. However, uh, we of course have this calendar now inside of the my calendar document, but we want to display it in calendar one because this is the actual page in the front end. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to calendar one and we're going to import my calendar one. And then what we can do is replace our calendar one page text by just having my calendar one as a code block 
on the screen right here. And now when we save this, a calendar should appear in the calendar one page. So let's see if it actually does the trick. And the page has just reloaded and you can see that now a calendar has appeared on the screen. And by using the buttons on the top, we can go to different months and even different years. And we can click on today to go back to the month where we're actually at. So this is already looking quite nice. Right now, our calendar doesn't actually display anything because there's no real events going on. So let's change that and plot some events on this calendar by hard coding them inside of our code. And the way to do that is to go to mycalendar1.jsx. And in there, we can add a new parameter called events. And then we can do an is sign, some squarely brackets, and then some square brackets like this. Now in here, we can plot multiple events and make sure that they are displayed inside of our calendar. And if you take a look at the documentation, you can see that there's actually a lot of stuff that you can put inside of your event. You can give it an ID. You can say whether it's all day or not. You can provide start dates, end dates, and also titles and URLs. But for now, we will be keeping it simple. Later on, we can see how we can enrich this and make it a little bit more complex. So for now, I'm going to be creating a few new events. And for that, we need to put in uh, some attributes that we want to display. So the first thing that I want to display is a title, because that is something that full calendar is going to expect. So in here, I can say that this is event number one. And we're going to give it a start date and not an end date for this one. So I just can put in start like this. And then we can put in some dates by putting it in the order of year, 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 month, month, and then day, day. So let's do 2024 and then 04 because we're currently in April. And let's put it on the day of today, which is the 17th of April, like this. Now we can copy this over and put some more events on the screen. So I can also do event number two. And in here, say that this one starts on the 19th of April. Um, but maybe this one also has an end date. So I can say that end is going to be equal to the 21st of April. So we're going to change 19 to 21 like this. Now, sometimes events are not only on days, but you can also specify the time. So let's copy over this particular one right here. And we can say event number three starts at the 24th of April. But we're also going to specify a time by doing T. And then we say that it starts at 12. Exactly. So we're going to put a 0, 40 minutes and 40 seconds. And let's assume that there's no end right here. And for event three, we're going to put in an additional prop right here, which specifies all day. And we're going to set that to false. And what that is going to do is it's going to actually show the time right here, because for the other ones, it's just going to assume that this event is going to take all day. So let's save our events and let's see what we now see in our calendar. So we're now back in our front end and you can see the three different events being plotted on the screen. We can see event number one on the date of today. We can see an event spanning multiple days right here, which is event number two. And we can see a third event with the time being specified right here. So this is working just fine. Now, of course, there are many more props that we can initialize inside of our full calendar, both general ones that display different views or different ways to display the calendar, but also different ways to plot your events and options over there. And those are the topics that we are going to be discussing in the next videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.